I mean, this is what we found. Everybody, the good ones, are really at peace with themselves, and they're beautiful people. They have absolutely no... Alzi tablets. We were going to go to the Avalon. And I had promised to return some keys by a certain time, so I dropped the tab and thought I'd be back in 20 minutes. You know, just coming on. And hit me on the street. And I got lost. I couldn't find the house from which I started. And finally, I was so stoned, I fell back against the doorway and sat down. You know, I was being overwhelmed by this acid 
No, you're not alone. And I was just happily wandering around the streets and watching the night get quieter. And I talked to some hippies sitting in front of Tracy's. Once they had nowhere to go. Then, in the patrol car, the street was empty. The patrol car passed me. And a policeman peered out at me with a terrific scowl on his face. He looked so unhappy. I thought I'd cheer him up, but I waved. <laughs> and the police car stopped and pulled back. And they want, came out. And this, in a very aggressive voice, wanted to see my ID. Immediately flashed their flashlight into my eyes. And uh, he says, hmm. No response. You know, the pupil didn't respond to the light. And he said, what are you up on? And all this time, I was so open, I forgot to be afraid of him. And I said, well, I'm on acid. So they were just hippies in the street that might have asked me. <laughs> so anyway, I was arrested and charged with being drunk in public and uh, endangering the health and safety of myself and others. And jail was a bad place on acid. I didn't know whom to call, so I finally called the Oracle. Well, I had a lawyers. I, I couldn't believe that I would get convicted. No more than I could believe I could be arrested for doing something which is, to me, of my own choice. Like, it should be up to me which drugs I take and which drugs I don't take. And it's just so illogical to have a law against it when I'm using drugs the way I do. Strawberry fields. I met a girl named uh, Natasha. She's a Russian girl. Uh, we've been traveling around off and on together for a long time. And uh, we were up in Seattle, Washington. And uh, with Betty.
think they said about LSD. I've seen so many people really sick on alcohol. And I've never seen anybody on a bad trip on acid. I've seen people really miserable with uh, juice, but uh, I've never seen anybody on acid really in a bad way. you can create.
Europe. Well, we've got friends here. And another thing, too, you know, this, this whole hippie thing and the whole uh, brotherly, the whole, you know, hum human aspect. Uh, and then we had some friends who'd, who'd been down, who'd been down before. And uh, this girl was saying, well, gee, she said, you know, it, it's really happening down there, Marty. Like, I came down and I was so, you know, I, was, I got separated from my friends and I was so stoned that I didn't know, you know, where I was supposed to go back to. And, you know, people were so great. They took me in and uh, said, well, here's a place to stay. You want to fed me and gave me a sweater. And, and then after I came down, where well, they helped me find my friends. You know, just real cool things like... All the dreams you have. You know, of, yeah, of people of the ideal people. things, you know, they, they come back and they say, it's happening there, it's, it's, it's there, you know. Oh. How did you ever get the hate ash? Uh, well, how far back? I came in here for the evening. I was visiting some friends in Belmont, and I came to visit some friends on Oak Street for the evening, and I've been here ever since. Where'd you come from? Where, where did you go to school? In New Jersey, and two years to private school in Pennsylvania, and half a year to Fairleigh Dickinson. But that ended quickly, because I took some acid. <laughs> dropped out. <laughs> you, you dropped out of college? Two days after I took it. Well, I, there'd been a lot of friction going on in my mind anyway, as to uh, how much I... I really wanted to go to school and whether I was in the right field. And it was psychology I was going into. And then I, I had some friends who worked at Sandoz that had gotten some, that wanted somebody to try it. So <laughs> they asked me, cause I'd, and I'd never tried anything. I'd never smoked grass or anything. And, and then I took the acid. So it was really weird because there was no buildup. Nobody explained anything to me except that, you know, you're going to take this and you're going to feel odd. <laughs> I never thought it was the 4th of July. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Hi, Hi, what are you doing the 4th of July? Oh, handing out little white caps. Hmm? Were you uh, on it yourself? Were you trying them? Oh, yeah. I'd taken um, a purple one before I started handing out. And then as I was handing it out, I was taking more. Uh, what, a couple of hundred uh, doses went out or what? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure how many I gave out. However many takes to fill pockets about that full. I just, you know, reached into the cookie jar and filled my pocket, so to speak. <laughs> what would you guess was the total amount given out that day? I'd say probably about a thousand. <laughs> you want to do that?
last fellow you gave it to? Because the guy sitting on the blanket, I think that you're taking the movie to. No, we haven't seen him since. <laughs> really? You told me that once, but that was about two weeks ago. Uh -huh. Still haven't seen him. I don't know what's yeah. happened to him. <laughs> I'll probably put his head somewhere else and off he went. <laughs> and I haven't seen you since. That was the 4th of July. What, what went on that day? Oh, hey, wow, man, I can't do this. Uh, uh, I saw the, uh, uh, can't do it. Uh, so nonverbal, I'm just, I've been, uh, I've been into very nonverbal things recently. I wanted to verbalize it, and there was a very nonverbal experience on the 4th of July, and, uh, I just, at the time, like, I was finding, you know, little enough meaning in words as it was. And, uh, uh since then, it's, uh, uh, it's beyond verbal explanations. You know? <laughs> so I can't verbally explain it. Did you like what happened? Yeah, but it, <clears throat> it was the ex just the experience itself. All the previous acid trips, like, there's been a difference in, uh, in how I felt after I came down this past trip. It was, you know, the experience itself was groovy, but there was no, uh, I didn't feel any change. You know, it was just it was the same me afterwards. It was you know, after the experience. I experienced the acid experience, but uh, you know after that it was just me again and the same pieces I had to put back together and uh, no, <coughs> no new revelation really other than just the, the experience. Was this one any heavier? Oh yeah, it was pretty heavy. Yeah. I was, I was wondering how yeah. you disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I dissolved. I've been dissolving for months. Thomas Kuhn, David Kuhn. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, shit. The wrong trail. Oh, my God. 